So, if you've been on the internet at all recently, you've probably seen this clip going around. Hey, I'm trying to focus on what's important. What's important is not standing by and allowing someone to suffer or die because you do nothing. If you don't get that, then you don't get the first thing about being Spider-Man. A clip from a heavily underrated game called Spider-Man Edge of Time. A game that features Miguel O'Hara and everybody's favorite, Peter Parker. In this scene, Miguel is trying to convince Peter that allowing a single person to die is for the betterment of the future. That sound at all familiar? That's right. The conflict in this scene is a near-perfect mirror to the main conflict of Across the Spider-Verse. Except here, the characters are swapped. Miguel is still Miguel, but Peter is now replaced by Miles. So, in Across the Spider-Verse, where does Peter Parker stand in this conflict? Apparently, he stands right with Miguel. Now, I think we can all see where the problem is here. As amazing of a film as Across the Spider-Verse is, the one complaint nearly everyone had is that in the process of pushing Miles forward as the main character, it seems as though the writers had to commit a little of what we like to call character assassination to the long-lasting fan favorite, Peter Parker. We know it's hard, but it's the truth, Miles. And the problem doesn't just lie with the fact that a singular Peter Parker chose to stick by Miguel's philosophy, it's the fact that thousands of them did. And for some of them, we were all too familiar with. Everyone has their own personal favorite. Maybe some of you love Peter B. Parker, maybe Insomniac Peter, I know he was my favorite for a good while. But the one who's caused the most debate on the community is whose side would have really persuaded the spectacular Spider-Man. Man, even just thinking about this version of Spider-Man puts me in a good mood. Cause everything about this version of the character just felt right to me. And it was honestly a tragedy that we lost such an amazing interpretation of the character before we got to really see him shine. But when he showed up in the theater, I lost my damn mind. It got to a point where I was too busy gasping for air that I didn't even hear Josh Keaton's line when I first watched it. Which was really frustrating when I realized it. But as hyped as I was about seeing the legend back, I was a little conflicted. Spider-Man. My Spider-Man was siding with... Miguel? No, this doesn't seem right. Maybe he'll switch sides by the end of the movie? Maybe he's conflicted. Then we see all of the Spider-Man chase down Miles, and that included Spectacular. As I watched the rest of the movie, I enjoyed it, sure, but I felt an itch at the back of my head, telling me that the writers of this movie, the writers of this amazing movie, is telling me that my favorite Spider-Man would willingly let someone die, and I'm just gonna have to accept it. But I didn't want to. In the movie, we see multiple different versions of Peter Parker on screen. Hell, we even saw Lego Peter on there, but to me, there's a single aspect of Parker that I believe can't be dismissed. See, as the comics went on, Peter wasn't the only Spider-Man anymore. There was Miles, Miguel, Gwen, Ben, Kane, and so much more. Some of them having their own unique stories, and some of them even having more powers than the original Peter Parker. Yet most of them still follow the principle of with great power comes great responsibility. So with all that in mind, what's keeping Peter from being considered basic. We have all these other versions of Spider-Man who by all means use Peter Parker as their canvas and made their own unique paintings out of them. So is he even really that special anymore? In my opinion, yeah. Not only has Peter offered more stories in general, but what has always drawn me to his version of the character goes all the way back to the beginning, his reason for fighting. The reason he himself follows with great power comes great responsibility is mainly because of his guilt. After willingly letting the criminal go and causing the death of his uncle Ben, he knew that his in action directly caused all of this to happen. His guilt and desire to make sure that this never happened again is what drove him to follow that philosophy throughout his entire journey. But out of all the Spider-Men out there, I'd argue Peter is the one who follows it to an absolute fault. To me, Peter Parker is the ultimate example of a man who was self-sacrificing to a fault. See, that phrase we all hear and love is in and of itself flawed. Telling you to always help others if you can is a very virtuous thing to say for sure, but what about when it comes at your own cost? And most Spider-Man stories are aware of this. Spider-Man 2 was and is still being praised for the way they're able to portray this. Every chance Peter gets, he will always choose to help someone as Spider-Man, but at the cost of his personal life. Every time Spider-Man wins, Peter Parker loses. And the same goes vice versa. When he finally chose to take a break, someone died in a fire, someone he couldn't save. It's an endless loop of Peter never properly being able to find a true balance in his life, and yet, by the end of the movie, he puts the suit on anyway, choosing to do what he thinks is best for the others at the cost of himself. Spectacular is an amazing adaptation of a character because they're able to showcase this too. We've all seen this clip. I never asked to be Spider-Man. I never asked for these powers. I never knew it would mean a bashed up hand, a hard 9 p.m. curfew, no job, and friends who all think I'm scum. It was all just a twist of fate, bad luck, a random bug bite. Easiest decision I ever made.
concept. And for good reason. It shows how strong Peter's resolve is, despite how flawed it is. The tragedy of Peter Parker is that no matter how much it hurts him personally, he'll always try to do the right thing. No matter how impossible it is, he'll always try. When given an absolute of who he's going to save, even if it wasn't a choice, Peter will always choose to save both parties. And whether or not it all works out, he'll know that he did everything he could. That's why this clip was circulating the internet so much. Everyone understands Peter Parker, and this game actively shows that. Trying to save everyone, even if it seems impossible, is exactly what he would do. Because that's exactly what it means to be Spider-Man. So, what happened in Across the Spider-Verse? Did the writers really twist Peter Parker's character to make way for Miles' story? Did they really do it as a way to make the new main character stand out better? Actually, I don't think so. Here's the thing. I trust these writers, and I'm 100% certain they know how Peter is supposed to be written. Why do I say this? Three words. Peter B. Parker. This version of Peter is everything I just explained brought together. This is a man who's followed the line so much that he's learned to despise it, but no matter how much he doesn't want to hear it, he still feels obligated to follow it. All because of that guilt, to always keep fighting, to always keep getting back up. The writers understand Peter Parker, so why make the choice of making it so only Miles wants to save everyone? I think it's because of Miguel's approach. The best way to explain this is by painting a picture. If spectacular Spider-Man were put in Miles' position, let's say Miguel told him that Aunt May had to die, and it was a canon event, then Peter would do the exact same thing as Miles. We'd get to see a recreation of that 1v6 where Peter bodied the Sinister Six in his sleep, but this time, he'd do it with the entire Spider Society. Do you really think that this boy- <coughs> Hey, Aunt May, how's the most beautiful girl in Forest Hills this morning? <laughs> Peter. <laughs> who loves his Aunt May so much would ever let her die? No, never. See, I think the way they're framing the story isn't so much that all the other Spider-Men are siding with Miguel because they agree with his philosophy. I think the reason they joined Miguel is because he gave them peace. Let's think about it. In Miles' position, Miguel explaining that someone is going to die is a canon event. To Miles, that's a declaration. It's something that Miles believes that he can fight. And in the hypothetical scenario where Spectacular is in Miles' position, he would also believe that he could fight that the Declaration. They wouldn't want anyone to die, the usual Parker philosophy. But if Miguel were to come up to you after your canon event already happened, then to you, it's not a declaration that he's making, it's an explanation that he's giving you. Maybe it wasn't entirely your fault. Fate itself wanted you to suffer this way. It wasn't all on you. So if Miguel were to come up to every single Spider-Man after their canon events already happened, then it can explain why they follow Miguel so fondly. Not necessarily because they are willing to just let people die, but because Miguel's explanations made them think that Uncle Ben's death wasn't really any of their faults entirely. And this is why I believe Spectacular Spider-Man chose Miguel's side. But that's only for now. We're all still waiting for Beyond the Spider-Verse. With Miles being the first Spider-Man to learn about his canon event before it happens, I think it's going to give every other Spider-Man some perspective to think about. This includes our collective favorite, Spectacular Spider-Man. In conclusion, Spectacular joined Miguel at first because Miguel made him feel better about Uncle Ben. But after seeing what Miles is going through, I think he's eventually going to switch to Miles' side in Beyond the Spider-Verse. That's all I have to say for now, and I'm sorry if my voice is really bad right now. I'm really sick, so my voice is done for. We have gotten two straight amazing movies so far with Into the Spider-Verse and Across the Spider-Verse, and if Beyond the Spider-Verse is going to be just as good, at the very least just as good as them, then we're going to have the best superhero trilogy in my opinion. So thank you guys so much for watching, and please subscribe if you guys are into it, so thank you.